If you are financially strapped, you have to tithe your way out of poverty. You must be obedient to God in tithing. How can one be obedient to God in tithing, when one is not even tithing that which God said his holy tithe is to consist of? God said that his holy tithe is to come from agricultural crops, flocks, and herds. How can one be obedient to God in tithing, when one is not even tithing where God said his holy tithe is to be observed? God said his holy tithe is to be observed in the promised land. How can one be obedient to God in tithing, when one is not even giving the tithe to whom God said his holy tithe is to be given? God said his tithe is to be given to Levites, widows, orphans, and foreigners. How can one be obedient to God in tithing, when one is not emulating the tithing practices of a single biblical character? No one in the Bible took their monetary income to tabernacle, temple, synagogue, or church. No one. No one in the Bible was commanded to tithe their monetary income to tabernacle, temple, synagogue, or church. No one. Tell me, just who are you obedient to when God's word reveals an agricultural tithe as God's required tithe, but you are tithing money? People also do not bank in desert tables. We hardly use cash anymore, let alone cattle or stones. The precious metals like silver and gold are in vaults with paper money and code serving as currency. As far as the Abraham's tithes go, besides their predating the Levitical priesthood, he paid tithes to Melchizedek, God's eternal priest whose order the Lord Jesus Christ became high priest. Hebrews 7 has much to say about the eternal tithe according to their heavenly order. An order that Hebrews 7 says is still in effect. You might want to check your Bible. Silver was the means of buying and selling from the time of Abraham and forward. In Genesis 23, Abraham purchases the cave at Machpelah from Ephron for 400 shekels of silver. Verse 16 of this chapter tells us that silver is the current money of the merchant. In Genesis 37, Joseph is sold into slavery for 20 pieces of silver. In Genesis 43, Joseph's brethren took double money to Egypt to buy food. The word money in this chapter is translated from the Hebrew Kesef. Kesef is defined as silver. In Exodus 16, every male between the age of 20 and 60 is required to pay a tax of a half shekel of silver annually, whether they are rich or poor. In Leviticus 27, many things dedicated to God can be redeemed, bought back, if silver, even a portion of one's crops tithe could be redeemed. Silver was redemption money of the tabernacle. In Deuteronomy 14, the feast tithe could be sold if it was too heavy, or if there was a chance of it spoiling before the Israelite reached the place of festivities. Upon reaching the place of festivities, the Israelites was to buy food as the feast tithe and eat it with his family. In Judges 9, Abimelech paid people silver to follow him. In Judges 17, a graven image was purchased with 200 shekels of silver. In Jeremiah 32, the weeping prophet purchased land from his uncle Hanamiel with 17 pieces of silver. In Matthew 14, ointment might have been sold for 300 pence. In Matthew 20, parable speaks of workers agreeing to work for a penny. Abraham's tithe to Melchizedek was of war spoils, not of his monetary income. Israel's tithe was of agricultural increase, not of their monetary income. There's nothing in the word of God that indicates anyone being required to tithe their monetary income to either tabernacle, temple, synagogue or church. Hebrews 7 is not speaking of an eternal tithe. Even if it were speaking of an eternal tithe, I have demonstrated that silver was the currency from the time of Abraham, forward and into the New Testament, yet it was not required as tithe. Hebrews 7 does say that men that I received tithes. However, context shows who those men were. It was not pastors of the New Testament church. It was the sons of Levi, and the titles taken were tithes. According to the law, again, the titles according to the law were agricultural. They were crops, flocks and herds. At the time that Hebrews was written, it was AD 66. The temple was still standing. Unbelieving Jews were still tithing to the Levites and the Levites were tithing to the temple. That is why the author of Hebrews said he are men at I received tithes. The sons of Levi were still operating under the Mosaic law. Nothing in scripture instructs or infers that Christians are to tithe, 
must lust that they are to tithe their monetary income. The monetary income tithe requirement is totally foreign to the word of God. Those who teach it call the word of God a lie, and the God of the word a liar.